Welcome to Dishonored Death of the Emo Odin. Oh wait, no. Outsider. Yeah, Death of the Outsider. We are here at the finale already. What a journey Dishonored has been, but we are finally at the third and final game in the trilogy. With two phenomenal games that came before it, how will Death of the Outsider fare? Will it end the series on a high, or will it ruin everything and stamp on its twitching corpse? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's by grinding all 30 achievements that this game has to offer. So, without further ado, and for the final time for a Dishonored game, welcome to the Achievement Grind. So this game takes place a couple of months after the end of Dishonored 2. And also, if you haven't seen any of my previous Dishonored videos, make sure you watch them first for all of the wonderful, delicious context. In Death of the Outsider, you play as none other than Billy Lurk herself. It starts with Billy returning to Kanaka to find and reunite with Dowd after not seeing him for 15 years. We start on her last and final lead to Dowd, apparently he's in a strange boxing club in the Albarca Baths. So we dock the dreadful will and head straight there. Well, when I say head straight there, firstly we have weirdly given the power to talk to rats. Listening to the rats, they can give you clues as to the best way to tackle missions, what the characters are thinking and even where the characters can be. But for the most part, they do talk utter nonsense. I know this because when I talked to them five times in a row, the first achievement popped, aptly named Rat Whisperer. But we decide to move on very quickly, we get into the car and head down to the club. Now for both of the previous games, the first playthrough I did was a silent pacifist. No one alerted and nobody killed. Now for Death of the Outsider, we're only going to be half to doing one of these, silently, because there actually isn't an achievement tied to sparing everyone in your playthrough. I only have to do that for a single mission. Now, not to dog on the game immediately, but this did disappoint me a little bit. My favourite part about Dishonored was the two clear paths that you could take in the game, with of course a muddle of the two in the middle if you wanted. You could either be silent and merciful, and have to use smart movement and discover the best way to take out targets, or just cut your way through in a path of chaos and destruction. But I didn't have that option for the most part here, as the chaos system has been completely removed, and I miss it. But I digress. Let's carry on. We first have to reach the bath, so we start by silently taking down the guards one by one. But eventually, we arrive outside of the boxing club and just waltz right in. When we enter, one of the first things that we immediately see is a massive grate in the floor. Inside said grate is Dowd, tied to a chair that strips him of his powers and turns him into a feeble old bastard. Now, this club is ran by a void-worshipping cult called the Eyeless, and we will learn a little bit more about them later on. For now, we set to free Dowd. So, we sneak our way upstairs, steal absolutely everything we can get our hands on, knock the leader of the club unconscious, and steal her key. With this, we can now head back downstairs and turn off the suppression device, giving Dowd his powers back. When we do that, boy are we in for a treat. The entire club goes apeshit, and quite rightly so, since Dowd gets his powers back, he just goes full John Wick, and kills everyone in the building within a matter of seconds. But now, he is safe, and we have a wonderful reunion. Well, when I say wonderful reunion, he waits all of 30 seconds before being like, hey, hey, let's kill the outsider. He then travels back to the dreadful whale to talk to us later, so we start to head there ourselves. We also unlock the achievement Uncaged for freeing Dowd. When we then go to leave, the place is stormed by the local police, but they are fairly easy to avoid. In fact, all of the enemies are, and within a couple of minutes, we are already back at the whale, first mission over, and we gave the achievement Agent of Mercy for not killing anybody in a single mission. The next morning, we are visited by the outsider himself. We ask what he wants before he then just forces his mark on Billy, taking her arm and her eye in the process before disappearing into the darkness. So, it's time to talk to Dowd, I guess. He instantly knows what the outsider did to us and says, that his connection to the void is fading, so we need to act fast to take care of this little problem. Dowd then reveals he actually knows how to kill the Outsider. The Eyeless Cult have a relic, the knife that made the Outsider thousands of years ago. We need to find the leader of the cult and find out where that knife is hidden. So to do so, we need to go to a place called the Red Camellia, which is where low-ranking Eyeless members get tattoos to kind of rise them up the ranks. So that's where I need to head to next. Arriving at the next level, we also now, of course, have access to our new powers. We have a new unique version of Blink called Displace that lets us place like a clone that we can then teleport to. It's not too bad, but it does feel a little bit slower than either of the powers that came before it that mimicked Blink. We then also have Foresight, which allows us to scout a location in the spirit realm whilst time stands still, which is really good for scouting ahead. And then the last we have is Semblance, which allows us to take the face of a character we knock unconscious and walk around as them, which is a lot of fun to use. 
One of the first things we do though is use Displace. I cast my hologram inside of another human and then when I teleport to it, the person erupts into a mist of blood and guts. Surprising for sure, however, we do get another achievement called Occupational Hazard. But back to the mission. First, we of course explore. We steal stuff, find secrets and whatnot, you know, nothing too crazy. Now, this felt very odd as we were free to kill anybody we wanted to. We just can't get spotted. So being able to chuck civilians in a furnace to burn them into a fine powder was fun, but it did feel strange. As we carry on exploring though, we then find a section where as we walk into it, a man screams that the guards need to close a trap door, as he doesn't want to fall through it during a speech and die. And I remember seeing an achievement for killing a target by doing just that, so I knew that we could get a nice kill here as well as another beautiful achievement. So what I decided to do was quickly pull the lever below him to send him hailing two foot to his death for the achievement, then reload and kill him from afar so that we don't get spotted. And that's exactly what we do, plummeting Ivan Jacoby a couple of inches to his death, gaining the achievement public shaming. We then reload the save and kill him from afar, this time just setting the punk on fire. We now went for a miscellaneous achievement, which had us use a hook mine, a tool which sort of pulls an enemy into it and knocks them unconscious. It's a great tool to use though, and this achievement has us launching an enemy 40 meters by using one. And at first this confused me because I wasn't too sure how to launch somebody using a tool that sucks them in. However, I soon saw this massive drop and wondered if 40 meters would also count down if it was a fall. So we find the nearest human close by, this unfortunate fisherman fellow. We take away his ability to breathe before then placing a mine on the side of the drop and chucking him off. This did not work at first. The first time is because I missed entirely, but after he would proceed to just get sucked to the mine, but then not drop to his death. And I was really confused on how to proceed. So I just hit him and then he fell and hit the floor. The achievement hook then popped and I didn't understand it myself, but sod it, it's done, and that is another achievement down. Shortly afterwards, we then find the Red Camellia. We dispatch the hard-working employee before we soon find ourselves in front of a tattoo machine. We then sit down and give myself the freshest of new inks. But now we actually look like an eyeless, and with this, we can now enter an exclusive bar for them. And we also find a note saying that two of the people in this district have keys that I will need to proceed, so... Knowing that I need to grab them, I rush back to Ivan, take the key off his crispy corpse before we then track down Sean Young, a local singer. To get to him, we need to enter the eyeless bar and then kind of connect into his house through there. But first, before we do that, we go for a couple more miscellaneous achievements. The first has us use semblance to imitate a high ranking guard and then have a lower ranking guard salute us in their form. This one, again, fairly easy and we unlock salute without any issues. And the one after that, I had to make three people sick at the same time by throwing one of these plague tonics at the floor. Again, a fairly easy one. When we got to the door of the bar, the guard spots my fancy fresh ink and lets me in. We then find a bottle lying on the counter. We take it, chuck it on the floor and three people are immediately sick, unlocking the side effects achievement. We then work our way upstairs, take out the guard protecting the entrance to Sean Yoon's home and then invite ourselves in. We find out that his key is inside a safe that is voice activated. So being the genius that I am, we quickly find Sean use semblance on him so that we can take his form and go and sing into the safe's microphone. Now, that doesn't work, but it does give us a new wonderful achievement, Nightingale, for trying. It turns out what we actually have to do is go to the lower levels and steal a song recording to then play through the microphone to open the door. Now we have both keys to the safe in the vault where the knife must be, and we also gain the achievement two turns for obtaining said keys. So, with the keys acquired and the mission well done, we sprint to the exit and head back to the Dreadful Whale to start the next chapter. Back on the boat, we then talk to Dowd again who tells us that it's time to go for the knife and find a way into the void. But for that we actually need to break into the bank to get to the vault. There are a couple of ways in. We can take the roof, the trash disposal and the sewers. But with the bank having incredibly high security we need to make sure that we enter silently. Dowd then tells us that there's actually a ventilation system on the roof that if we fill out with a knockout gas we'll send every single guard in the building to the land of Nod. So the roof is the way that I want to go. So once again we head out to the district. Now it's the same exact location as the one before so I was already very familiar with the layout. The first thing that I do is go and visit the black market for some supplies, but once I'm there, I actually realise they sell the tonic I need, and I don't even need to go bother finding the pharmacy and going down that route. So, I just buy it immediately and get ready to approach the bank. Once there, I realise how well guarded this place in. Dogs and guards are at every angle, so it does take us a couple of moments to go through and a couple of failed attempts. Whilst doing so, we also find the body of the bank's custodian on the edge of a cliff. He went down the cliffside looking for a pricey Rolex and died trying to get it. So, we find him, take the custodian's key, as well as the watch that he was down there to get, and then head up to the roof. We knock out a couple of unaware guards on the roof before finding the vent system and pouring all of the sleep juice inside. 
and it works perfectly. When we enter, every single guard is knocked out completely. We just have to be careful in not waking any of them up. And the easy way to do that is just by shooting them in the head with a pen, which also unlocks us our next achievement, Mightier Than The Sword. We slowly work our way through the bank, avoiding arc pylons and clockwork soldiers before we are then at the Great Vault. Now we just need to get it moving, so I head to the top and see that it has four breaks that if I removed would send it crashing down and ripe for the taking. So we spend a little bit more time exploring to make sure we get everything, also finding a key to the vault behind a hidden wall as well as some documents that suggest that the Eyeless have actually found a way into the void and we need to press forward to find out how to do it ourselves. We also on our way find a big shiny red lever, so since I'm a magpie, I take that as well and head back on top of the vault. We pry open the four bricks which sends the vault crashing down and through the floor into the sewer below, also unlocking the achievement Party Crasher. So we got them all opened and helped ourselves to all of the delicious loot within, also gaining another achievement Obsessive Safe Cracker. Once we have stolen all that there is to steal, we then use the two keys on the final safe door and open it to then find the knife that we wanted, the blade that was used to cut the outsider's throat and turn him into the god that he is today. We pick it up and immediately transport to the void where the outsider appears and does the cliche, you know, we're not so different you and I speech. We're not so different you and I. He says that he knows what I plan to do but there may be another choice before then telling us that Dowd has died. He then disappears and the game generously gifts us another achievement, Twin Bladed Knife. But now it's time to head back to the boat to find out what the hell happened to Dowd. Now, honestly, this just annoyed the hell out of me, I can't lie. Dowd is one of my favourite characters in the series. He's the, one of the only characters with a character arc and I felt truly invested in him. Then there's the big reunion with him and Billy and then he just dies like that, off screen and with no moment between him and Billy. Now, we do meet him again in the future but God, this annoyed me. And it was such a cheap move that could have been done so much better. Like, that's like killing Corvo off screen. It just seemed a little bit lazy to me and there was a million better ways to do it in my opinion. But the game's the game and now Dowd is officially dead. Billy then bends down her boat and cremates Dowd's body within it. And we only know that through the art scenes between missions. And again, this really annoyed me, but we carry on, I guess. For the next mission, we have to steal important documents that this character stole. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name because if I can't pronounce Mjolnir properly, then uh, there's just no chance for this. But the documents we're trying to find are how to actually enter the void, so of course we need them. We set off now to the location that's the same as the one in Dishonored 2, where we had to take care of Brienne. So we silently kill all of the guards blocking the entrance and make our way inside. Now, honestly, this mission was easy and there wasn't actually anything really to talk about. We went from floor to floor, killing or knocking out the guards until we took out the leader of the cult called Sister Lena Rosewin, who had the document strapped to her belt. It's a sort of slide to a projector. So we take it off her twitching lifeless body and unlock the next achievement, Gnosis? Gnosis? God, I wish I knew how to pronounce shit. Anyway, once we find a projector, we add the slide and it tells us of a hidden portal deep in the mountains just outside of Kanaka, in an old quarry, and that's where I need to go to travel to the void. So, just like that, and honestly, within like 15 minutes, we had the location sorted. We just needed to flee the level and carry on. And just like that, we're at the final mission in the game. <laughs> yep, so soon. We started the level with yet another visit from the outsider, saying what you're about to do will change the world, but again, reminds us that there is another way. And it's my choice, but I don't have to kill him, as I can go inside and try and find his name. But he also says that in here I will find another relic, a relic of the god that came before him, before he then disappears again. Now the start of the level is more of the same, bouncing from place to place, trying not to disturb anyone as we make our way deeper into the complex. But this time instead of the Eyeless or the guards, this place actually has the original cult that turned the outsider into what he is, just roaming about. Again, nothing to sing or scream about here, just more of the same. Within moments, we have infiltrated the building and now find ourselves inside the quarry where we are then greeted with a huge rock golem called an Envisioned. However, back to more of the same. We kill cultists without being seen and work our way slowly through the level until we reach the relic that the outsider told us about. It turns out to be the eye of the dead god. Billy can actually feel it watching her, so when she reaches out to touch it, she is then teleported straight into the void and we get our next achievement, Dead Eye. Now, this is where the Envisioned patrol, and they are not to be messed with. They have incredible vision, they have the ability to blink, and their hits pack a mean punch. So when one immediately spotted me, I decided to actually just try and kill one before reloading and carrying on silently. Now, many more had spawned whilst I was fighting, but eventually we had it on its knees, moments from death. We walked up and stuck our sword straight into its rocky brain and ripped it apart. 
Not only was it a pretty decent kill animation, but it also gives us our next achievement, Harder Than Stone. We then continue through the level avoiding these rock things, and not before long we find ourselves in a room. Now this room belongs to somebody that was studying the outsider and the mark that he leaves behind. We actually come to realise that the mark is actually the outsider's real name, but only those in the spirit world can actually speak it. I'm not sure if you can tell where this is going, but we soon find out that the outsider's real name is actually Colin. I'm obviously kidding, we don't ever find out, and honestly, I prefer it that way. Knowing the outsider's name kind of takes away from his mystery, so I kind of like him being nameless. Then mere moments later, we find a portal that takes us to the ritual hold, where the outsider is trapped. We then find the outsider cast in marble with Dowd once again being there as well, and as well as all the other people who died bearing the mark of the outsider, and it's a lot more than I thought. We talk to Dowd and he tells us to finish the job, but Billy says that there might be another way. If Dowd speaks his name instead, that will free him, and since there is two achievements tied to this ending, we decide to do both. Firstly, we stab him in his stupid heart. He turns to normal and falls into my arms, dying instantly. With that, our mission is complete and the outsider is dead. We unlock the achievements Deicide and Shadow. And that's it for the game. Billy talks about how the world will change and we don't know what will happen next, but now we very quickly reload the save and this time have Dowd speak the outsider's name to him. He walks up, whispers the name before disappearing for the final time. At that moment, the outsider emerges from the marble and the outsider thanks Billy for his freedom before she then returns him to Kanaka to start a new life. But by doing that, we unlock final release. Now, we're only 10 achievements left to get, and we thankfully can get most of them in the next playthrough whilst going for an achievement to complete the game again in New Game Plus. Something else that we need to take care of in this playthrough as well is to collect all of the paintings throughout the levels, as well as to complete every contract in every level. Now, I haven't mentioned them yet, but each level has a list of mercenary contracts that Billy can choose to complete for a reward, so we need to complete every single one for an achievement as well, so we got straight to it. This time, we had no need for silence. We sliced our way through the levels, gaining achievement after achievement. The first we go for for is back at Sean Young's house. Earlier when I said we grabbed a recording of a song to play through the microphone to unlock the safe, there's actually an achievement for grabbing it without turning off the floor security. Honestly, fairly easy to do as you just need to blink on top of the glass case, smash it and grab it for the achievement, Golden Locks. And that's the only one we needed for this level, so we finished the contracts, grabbed the paintings and headed out. The next achievement we needed was in the next level. This one had us break into the vault, steal everything and exit without disabling an alarm, triggering one or killing any of the unconscious security. However, on the way to do this and after completing the contracts, we also come across the last painting and get the achievement at Aficionado. This threw me, as I really hadn't found that many paintings, so out of five missions, only three of them had paintings in them, another really easy collectible grind. But we slowly work our way through the level again, this time unlocking the safe with a vault key inside the office where we found it. Instead of crashing it through the floor again, I didn't want to wake anybody up. We open it up, steal everything inside and make a hasty retreat. Upon exiting the bank, we then gain the achievement The Perfect Crime, and we're slowly getting to the end. In the next level, before we head inside the complex, I decided to try and grab another achievement. When we picked up the new sword in the last level, we actually unlocked a new ability called Void Strike, in which if we charge our attack, whoever we hit will be thrust into the air, and this achievement has us killing somebody with the fall damage of the strike. So this weird bridge staircase at the start seemed like a great location. It took a little while to do, as you don't really get to control which way the body is thrown, but thankfully we got it in a couple of minutes after sending this overseer crashing down the stairs, unlocking final nudge. In this mission we can also tick off another couple of achievements though as well. The next we got was for completing all of the contracts. Now I will say that the contracts were a little bit tricky sometimes, however the final contract I really did struggle. Not because it was difficult, but because I was a moron. Now this contract tasked us with killing every single overseer and cult member in the building. And after about 30 minutes of searching, I could not find the last person I needed to save my life. The irony. Until I remembered something. Earlier in the mission, I used a bottle of chloroform to hilariously knock out some of the cult members upstairs. Now, these folks were technically knocked out and not killed, so I went back and killed them all and then finally mercenary work popped soon after. We also got voices for breaking four of these N things, and once again listening to the voices of the oraculum, which again is another thing I might have mispronounced in the last vid. I am sorry, I'm trying my best, but my brain is wrinkle free. But with that, we have no more to get on this playthrough other than finishing it for a new game plus. So we raced our way to the end, stabbed the outsider in his stupid heart once again, and gained the achievement good old times. Now, we only had three left. Now, the reason why I couldn't get these three in new game plus is that the new Game Plus actually gives you all of Corvo's ability and removes the unique ones that Billy had, and for these last three I needed to use Displace and Semblance. 
So I booted up an old save and got to work and getting the last three. The first was easy as hell, we used foresight to place a marker inside somebody, then we back out of foresight and displace to them blowing them up. Basically it's the exact same parameters as occupational hazard but with an extra step. So we did this for clever planning. The next had us attend an auction to win a bottle of the knockout juice that we needed for the bank heist, so instead of buying off the black market I took somebody's face with semblance, sat down and just bid on the bottle until I won it, gaining the achievement big time player. And finally we're on the witch's mission again, this time instead of killing the person with the location of the void we need to use semblance on another leader in the building and have a meeting with her again very very easy to do and it took no more than five minutes we stole his face talked to the woman and then the final achievement popped the face of the abbey and that's it all 30 out of 30 achievements have been got and our job here within the entire dishonor franchise is done the grind is over now, Death of the Outsider, I have mixed feelings on this game, I really do. I think my issues stem from the lack of options really in dealing with each level. The best part about Dishonored 1 and 2 was coming up with a plan of action to tackle each level, whereas this game, I didn't feel the need to do so. There was no reward or alteration depending on what path you chose, and that did take away a lot of my enjoyment, especially during the semi-stealth playthrough, as there was no reward for playing smart and careful. I also found the game quite buggy compared to the other ones, and often guards would get stuck in animations, or for example, in this bizarre case the ragdoll effects were turned up to 10 and bodies flew all over the place. What? And I gotta say, this game just feels like DLC. I don't know why the studio decided to give it its own release, as by doing this I have to judge this as a standalone game, and because of that it suffers greatly. The missions are short and for the most part the same throughout the entire game. They reused a lot of assets from Dishonored 2 which adds to the feeling that it's DLC, and it made it seem a little bit lazy. And honestly, if this was actually DLC for Dishonored 2, I would be able to forgive a lot of this because the reason why this game suffers is as I said, I have to compare it to the gems that came before it. And honestly, I was disappointed and it wasn't the finale to the series that I was hoping it would be. Now, don't get me wrong, it was fine. Well worth a playthrough and there are some things that I did like that they added, like the contracts, which were a lot of fun, as well as the new powers and the new tools and whatnot. However, it didn't stop me from feeling like this game was missing a lot of content and a lot of things that I loved about the other games. However, let's get to the stats. This game, it only took us 9 hours, yep 9, to get all 30 achievements in the game. I'm sorry to say that I'm going to be giving this game a 5 out of 10 as it's well worth going through, but I have zero reason to ever return to it and it is pretty average as a game gets, which I didn't really want to be the case. And as far as difficulty for achievements, I would say that this game is a 2 at most. Needing to play through it twice as well as collectibles and contracts does knock this up by one point, but honestly, they were mostly a piece of piss to get. The hardest achievement for me was probably Perfect Crime, as that was the only time in which I had to use my brain throughout the entire game. And I'm sorry to end it like that folks, I really am, but that is Death of the Outsider and the final Dishonored game covered. I hope that we can get more in the future, I really do, but I do doubt that will ever happen. And even though this game was lacking compared to the rest, playing all three back to back makes for a phenomenal series and I am sad to see that it's over. However, don't fear, there are still several arcane titles we have left to play and enjoy and we are going to be getting to them very soon, do not worry. However, for next week's achievement grind, you all voted for it, so coming next Sunday is the first in a three part series where we tackle the evil within. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that next Sunday. But thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, it really means so much to me that you are all enjoying my silly silly little content so don't also forget to come swing by my twitch as well where we go for these live but that is enough from me this week thank you all so much for watching take care bye bye for now